Hey guys, today I want to talk about something that I haven't been touched by in the Philippines myself, but it's something that I hear a lot about, and I've, I've had a lot of emails in the past about this here, but this was a comment that was left the other day, and I'm going to talk about some of the emails also that I received in the past, and I'll, I'll address those, and it's not something I didn't think was that prevalent here, until just recently I started hearing more about this, and I started seeing some things that kind of pointed in that direction, it's something that's kind of hidden you know, and it's domestic violence. Domestic violence is something in the Philippines that happens mostly against the older expats, but it's not always older too. And I'm not sure, this guy doesn't go into his age, but I wanna cover what he has to say. He says, please address the domestic violence in the Philippines. I am divorcing my Filipina because of her violent beatings. Um, I am safe back in the USA. I won't accept this. I know foreigner men in Philippines that are also being beaten. Uh, by their wives or girlfriends, but they are too cowardly to leave their Filipina. But I was brave and confident, and I left my Filipina. And, and, you know, kudos to this guy for being able to leave. Um, he's, he says, uh, please warn the men about this terrible secret that isn't talked about. Thank God I left that violent relationship. Western relationships don't tolerate this crime. Domestic violence is a crime. Okay, and I, I'm not sure what the, the guy's age is, but I, I recently was um, contacted by a gentleman, and I had another one, a couple more in the past, actually. It was like probably about maybe four or five now that I think about it. Um, but it was this guy was 89 years old, 89 or 90 years old. He was up in the Angeles area, okay? And he was getting beaten by his girlfriend. He, I guess he was, in, he was pretty frail. Um, he wasn't doing well. And he sent me an email, which I was kind of shocked because somebody usually that's 89, they don't really use their um, computer that much. But this guy was kind enough to send me a, an email and let me know about this. And he told me that he had to go to his barangay. And one of the barangay officials up there uh, actually helped him out and managed to file charges on this woman. And somehow he managed to have a witness. Um, I'm not sure how he did, but he had a witness that somebody walked in and saw her beating on on him and he took it to the barong guy and filed charges and i'm not sure what happened but um i heard that the girl you know did do some time for that i guess and this is not uncommon we've also had people that were were sick that were just dropped off at the hospital i guess they had um alzheimer's or dementia or something like that and they just dropped these people off at the hospital um, not leaving any information on them or anything. And they probably keep the IDs and probably keep the ATM cards and all that stuff because it's probably somebody that had access to that, but they just didn't want to deal with the guy at the house and probably said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to deal with this. Also, people with dementia and um, Alzheimer's sometimes can get violent too. Um, and, and, and I think people that don't understand that um, can take it as the person is just a violent person. And usually people with dementia and Alzheimer's um, – most of them are pretty sedate um, and they're not violent, but sometimes they can be. And I've seen people that can be violent. They can hit people and stuff like that because they don't know any better. You know, they're kind of going backwards. Their mind, they're losing their mind. So they're not in control of everything. So people that are uneducated can kind of take that as, oh, I'm not going to put up with this violence and I'll start hitting him if he's going to hit me. I'm not putting up with this. And I could see that happening over here because... In the United States, we're, we're pretty well educated on things. We, we, we know things or other people will usually tell us. And I think in the Philippines, because of the education level, the education level's uh, um, not as good as in the United States. The average IQ I read was 81.4 in the Philippines. And it probably gets taken down because of all the people in the provinces that don't go to school. Um, <clears throat> they start working at age 12 or whatever, somewhere in the fields or whatever. And a lot of the people out in the provinces just are not educated that well. Some of the schools are not that 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 decent here. And, you know, when you think about it, you know, when you have a, 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 a lot of people that are uneducated, sometimes they don't understand the way the world works. And there's certain things that you don't do and there's certain moral guidelines you have to follow and stuff like that. And a lot of the... um people here think that they can get away with things more because here in the Philippines, you know, um, there's, it has its own set of laws and, 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 and things are very hard to, um, to process here with the, with the police here. It's just, it's not like you walk into the police station and say, Hey, I want to file a complaint and 
something happens. No, you have to start with the brawn guy and deal with that. And if it's something really serious, you can deal with the PMP, but you have to start with the brawn guy and kind of work your way up through the process. Okay, and it gets difficult. So if you have domestic violence going on in your house, you may want to talk to the brawn guy and you may want to start documenting, you know, when she hits you, write it down, um, see if you can leave your phone on when she's hitting you or something like that and try to catch it even if your phone's not recording the actual uh, you know, person doing it because they're not going to be doing it while you're recording them, obviously. Put your phone face down, at least record it so you can hear the sounds and stuff like that. Put it on so you can, you can have that and then take it down to the um, local barangay or whatever. You know, make sure that you're, you're, you're somehow documenting this happen and try to get out of that and leave as soon as you can. And, 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 you know, don't pay any attention to any of the threats or whatever. Try to get it documented at least once so you can prove your side of the story if it happens, God forbid. You know, it's probably the best thing you can do is to either get out of here, go back to the States or whatever, if it's that bad. Um, even if it means you're going into a nursing home or, or even possibly living, you know, in a shelter or something like that for a while back home, it's better off back home, you know, living in a shelter than living over here and getting, you know, beat up every day. You know, these guys over here, they, they, you can file for elder abuse over here also. Um, you know, if you, a lot of the guys over here think that they can marry these young girls that are in their 20s and they're in their 70s or 60s or something like that. And that comes around to haunt you later on because of the fact that, you know, you're with a girl that's immature, number one, <clears throat> and she thinks that you're going to perform for the rest of your life and you're going to keep giving her money and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, you can't perform. You're getting older. You, you kind of, you, you're just not as handsome as you look, you know, at, at a certain, whatever age they, they, they went with you, because sometimes even in our fifties and sixties, we're good looking guys still, you know what I mean? But, you know, but sometimes as, after a while, your body starts to fade, you know, we're not, the, the sex is just not that good looking as it was before when your fifties and, you know, or your sixties, when you reach your seventies and eighties, these women don't want to be around you so much. And, and, they kind of probably say, hey, I don't want to be stuck in this life. They're miserable and stuff. That's why you want to get involved with somebody that's probably a little bit more older than a 20 or 30 year old. Um, I know it's nice to be with a 20 or 30 year old woman. I mean, let's face it, you know, everybody that, that's in their 60s or 70s or even 80s wants to be with somebody like that. And I, 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 I talked to a guy that was also in his 80s a while back, um, late 80s, and he was with a girl that was in her 20s. And, and that relationship was actually doing really good, and it still is. You know, I talk to a lot of gentlemen throughout the Philippines, and some of these relationships work, and some of them don't. The ones that go south, though, I notice they tend to get abusive, and sometimes physically abusive. And it's usually the guys that are in their late 70s, early 80s, or late, late 80s. Um, I, I haven't talked to too many guys in their 90s here. There's just not that many here. Most most expats don't live into their 90s in the Philippines. They just don't. There's not that many around. I've I haven't heard of. I think I've heard of maybe maybe one guy that reached 90 or something like that. That's about it. Otherwise, I don't hear that many people out there that are in their 90s. But I do know that when I hear from people that are in their late 70s and in their 80s that those are the guys that I generally get uh, abuse claims from. And be aware of that, guys. You know, when you're out there looking around for a woman, the older, the better in some cases. And I would say anybody in their 60s or 70s, look for somebody that's in their 40s, at least 40s, 50s. There's some beautiful women out there in their 50s, even 60s. You know, there's some beautiful women out there. I've seen, you know, there's all... We have a lot of women in our group, actually, that are in their 50s, and they're still beautiful, good-looking women with a lot to offer the right man, if that's what you're looking for. You know what I mean? They're still attractive. They still look good in a bathing suit. Um, there's fun to be around. They have a lot more to offer than a 20-year-old, a 30-year-old woman. Not to say a 30-year-old woman, some of them can be pretty decent, too. Um, they're starting to, you know, catch on to what life is about. But some of them do not. They, some of them... The girls in their 30s are are, are mentally um, probably still in their 20s. You know, when I see them, you know, they're into the TikTok thing and stuff like that. And, and you know, I mean, I know there's women in their 40s and 50s that are into that, even 60s, because it's fun to do. I get that. But, you know, when you're doing it 24-7 a day, it kind of makes you look like, you know, you're a mental midget. Let's face it, you know, and you want a woman here that can keep up with you intellectually to a certain extent. Um, 
at least I do. And I, I know some women, some women here um, off of that too. There are women out there that are really smart. They're really with it. They're, they're on top of things. They, they know a lot of things here. And, and then there's other ones that don't. And there's a lot of guys that, that want women that they want the provincial women out there. And the provincial women bring their own set of problems, just like city women bring their own set of problems. And it's like what you can deal with. But remember, guys, when the, the, the younger they are, the bigger the set of problems. And a lot of guys think they can train a woman over here like a dog. And I've said this before, and, and you cannot train a woman like a dog. They're not dogs, you know, and, and I disagree with that idea that you can train a woman like a dog. And, I, I, and you know, I was talking with, with one of the guys just recently, and he was stating that, you know, that a lot of the women here, when they come from the provinces, they want to take care of their man. They want to, take, you know, and, and I, I disagree with that because I think they come not knowing what, what men want. And they think that that's what men want. And they throw that out there in the beginning. And then once you're, you're hooked with them and you're married to them or you're living with them as a partner, I think they kind of, the real them comes out. You know, I think, I think Filipinas are on top of their game when it comes to snagging somebody. And I think once you get married to one or you've been with one for long term, I think you kind of see the other side you know, of that. Not always, you know. Um, we have a lot of guys that have been with their women for a long time. And sometimes... You know, relationships just aren't meant to be. You just don't, you know, you just don't, um, you're not a good match anymore after a while. And, th and that happens in relationships all the time, you know. But, I mean, be careful what you wish for, guys, sometimes. Because, you know, make sure that the woman is really going to be there for you later on. It's hard to tell. You really have to be very... You really have to look into the future and say, hey, is this, this girl going to be able to be there for me later on? How is she taking care of me right now? You know, you have, if you have illnesses and sicknesses now, and she's willing to put up with that now, hopefully she'll put up with that later, and I hope that she would for your sake. Just be careful, guys, when you're out there. Because, you know, to have this happen to this guy, this you know, this domestic violence, and, and to see other people... That have gone through it and hear from them and stuff like that. It's not something anybody wants to go through, you know. And domestic violence, God forbid, in our 70s or 80s can kill us, you know. Because, man, when you're going through that in your 70s or 80s, the stress level alone can give you a stroke or a heart attack. That's the rough part. But anyway, guys, I want to talk about that. Make sure if you if you do if you are experiencing any sort of domestic violence or anything like that, you know, make sure that you go to your barangay, go to the PMP, talk to them, get it, you know, try to get it documented. If it's happening every day and she's hitting you with things or something like that, try to document it somehow. Even if it's just a recording of her and you have it on your phone, put your phone upside down so she can't see that you're recording. You know, and just record at least her hitting you so that you can hear it on the phone. And then go back and listen to it when she's not around or whatever. And that way you're kind of safe. Anyway, guys, God bless. Take care. Remember, stay safe, guys. God bless. Take care.